welcome you folks. We're glad to welcome you this afternoon uh, to our uh, uh, UV tag and family history update uh, class. This is uh, Tuesday afternoon, uh, January 25th. Uh, I'm Dawn Snow. I'm in St. George, Utah, down on the desert where it's warm. Uh, Garrett Roof, who's our uh, uh, technical guru, is up north in Orem, Utah. Uh, it's a little bit cold up there, and they had some snow recently. But anyway, Gerhard is in charge of uh, the, the hosting things. Today, we're going to talk about Heritage Quest Online. This is part four of a three-part. Well, it's, so far, we've done three parts. And I'm going to do this one and then another part after this. Today, we want to talk about city directories and death records. <clears throat> now, city directories uh, are essentially phone books without the telephone numbers. Though I did notice that on uh, uh, on uh, some of the stuff on Heritage Quest Online, they've actually got telephone directories in with city directories, and uh, and they're a, a interesting way of finding people or where you lived or where your relatives did and so on. We're also going to look at some death records that are involved with uh, on uh, Heritage Quest Online. It is a gold mine of information. We've got a lot of stuff, and it's available for free uh, if you can figure out how to get to it. Uh, here in Utah, you can do it with a public library card, and many states, I know Texas does and several others do, where any library card, public library card in the whole state will get you into it, and we'll show how to do that here. They've just changed it, by the way, this last week as to how you get in here in Utah. Uh, it's an online uh, website. It's sponsored by uh, Ancestry. It used to be sponsored by ProQuest, but they changed, uh, oh, I don't know, probably six or eight years ago now. Um, and the city directories on there are a whole collection of uh, books that are printed, and we'll look at some examples and how you search them. Uh, they also have the Social Security Death Index on there, and it's one of the few places that that Social Security Death Index is still available. Uh, theirs goes up to 2014. Uh, so the other ones are later than that, but uh, uh, and and but many of them have been taken down. And they're not even on websites anymore. They have links to find a grave and many other death records, and we're going to look at some of those death records and examples of searching and so on. Now the class notes for this are on that website right there, UVTAGG, that's Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group um, uh, dot org. And uh, the, my notes are on there. That's where they're, I keep them all. And so you can go there at any time and download them. And they're available there. Uh, Gerhard Roof uh, will make a PDF of those and post it in the chat box uh, here on Zoom now and uh, in the uh, uh, Facebook page. Uh, later on, for those of you who may be watching this on Facebook uh, uh, later, they have the notes and there's links on there and links to where you can find the recent videos and even the video of this one today. And now examples and, and demos. This is what we want to uh, spend most of our time looking at today. And there's so much stuff on there that will only scratch the surface of some of the stuff that I've written in the notes. In Utah, use your public library card and go to that website that's there at the bottom, onlinelibrary.utah.gov, and then slash heritage uh, quests dash online. Now, I've already done that uh, in here, and I'll show you that in uh, just a second. In fact, right now, let's do it. Let me click over here and go to uh, my website. Here's the website. If you click on the uh, 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 the class notes page, this is the class notes page. This is this is where the notes are stored for the, my all my classes. And we're down here, classes coming up. Uh, here's today's is item one under classes coming up. Today's the fourth Tuesday of of January of uh, 2022. And uh, it's Heritage Quest Online Part Four. Click on that underlined link there. That's a link, and it'll take you to this page. So here's the notes for uh, today. There's an abstract there that tells a little bit about uh, Heritage Quest and uh, what it is, <laughs> information about uh, the class and about my uh, email address if you want to contact me later on and, and uh, so on. Heritage Quest Online, uh, HQO, if you see that, that's my shorthand for Heritage Quest Online. It's a website that libraries can subscribe to. Individuals can't, but libraries can, and then their patrons can get to it uh, for free, either at the library directly or with a library card or in family history centers. Uh, 
Now, this is the link that I was talking about that uh, shows you where it is. And I'll click on that here in a, in a couple of minutes to show you. And they have just changed that uh, within the last couple of weeks. So they're now using a program they call, let's see, it's called Open Athens. I'd never heard of it before, but it's, it does the same sort of thing. It stores your library card number and your password that you select. And so you can get back into it uh, later on. Uh, city directories on Heritage Quest Online. We'll look at examples of those and finding some information uh, in those. Uh, newspapers and obituaries. They do have a few newspapers and obituaries, but not very many. Um, and there are several different places where they're stored, but I've indicated on here where you can find some in the books section. Type in newspapers. You'll see a couple of other places where there are uh, some newspapers as well. The Social Security Death Index, we'll look at that. That's uh, for people who had a Social Security number. And remember, they started in Depression days. So it goes from 1835, I think it's the first one that uh, where anybody applied for a death benefit from that. And uh, the version that's here uh, goes up through, eight, uh, through uh, 2014. So it, it's not right up to date because they're, they they used to update it every month or two. But uh, some websites, I think, still do. But this one has, uh, ends at about 2014. But it will give the information about the person, uh, about uh, where they lived and uh, uh, what their Social Security number was and so on. Uh, then there's death records on here, various death records, and I think I mentioned once before, and I'll mention again, that I found my dad's death certificate on here. We paid to get copies of it, certified copies, which we needed for various purposes. But now I find that I could get actually a print, which is all you need for genealogy, uh, right from the computer on here. And then there's some conclusions down here uh, on it. Okay, let's go up back up here. I'm going to scroll back up here to where that link is. This is the link. Um, uh, uh, well, I will click on it and I'll show you what it looks like. This is the link of uh, the, in Utah here for the Utah Public Library uh, where you can get into Heritage Quest online. Scroll down toward the bottom. And this is now, they've changed. This is what's changed within the last month. Sign in with Open Athens account. If you don't have an Open Athens account, they're free, but you have to go over here to the right side and register for it. It used to just have your ask for your library barcode number from a Utah library and it would get you in. Now, I'm not going to click on that now because if I do, it'll show you my library card number. It won't show you my password, but it will show you my library card number. So I've already clicked on it and used my library card uh, and my password, and here it is, the, the program. And, and it will save it for you, so you don't have to type that in every time. Okay, here's Heritage Quest Online, as you've seen if you've been with us in some of these earlier uh, uh, classes that we've had. There's all kinds of information, your censuses and all that sort of thing. There's a bunch of things right here on the home page. Search the U.S. Census, search the books, search the Revolutionary War record, search Canada censuses. And you'd think, well, that's all there is to search. But if you click up here, go up to the top left, right up there, there's a button that says search. If you click on that, look what happens. Here's some of those same things. Search censuses, search books, search wills and probates, search city directories, search military records, search immigration records, public records, Social Security death index, uh, <clears throat> Revolutionary War pensions, U.S. serial set, Freedman Bank. The Freedman's Bank was for the slaves after they were uh, freed. They set up uh, accounts at this Freedman's Bank. And they, a lot of them were, they gave lots of genealogy information. So for the blacks, it's a wonderful source. Uh, search cemeteries and uh, search maps and photos, search records in other locations. All this stuff is on there and you wouldn't even know it if you didn't click on that search thing in the upper left-hand corner. Now, what we're going to want to talk about, first of all, is search the, the, uh, 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 the city directories. So I'm going to click on this one right here. Uh, to get to certain city directories. You can also get to it by going to books, search books, and then at the top of the search books and directories, you see these words here, people, publications, and city directories. And so that gets you into the city directories itself uh, right here.
Now, over to the right, they give you some information on what city directories they have. They're U.S. cities, and uh, city directories have been published for many years. Uh, their set starts from 18, says on here someplace, um, 18. 25 or 23 or something like that to around uh, 1989, I think. Now, it's not a complete set, of course, but and you have to look at other websites for others, but it's a, a lot of good information on here. And so uh, you can type in a name on here. And uh, as usual, I'll, I'll type in. Every time I teach these classes, I mention that I keep finding new stuff on my own dad and mom and family. I'm going to type in Eldon. That's my dad, Eldon Snow. S N O W, and it's usually good in searching. Start with minimal information, and then narrow it down as you go, since otherwise you might miss some stuff. Okay, I clicked on that searching thing. It came up with twenty-two thousand hits with Eldon Snow uh, in them. Eldon W. Snow. Now, most of these, of course, are not my dad. They're just other people. But these are these are the all U.S. city directories from eighteen twenty-two to nineteen ninety-five results, it says, for Eldon Snow. Now, notice that it's set up here. It put these little dots in here where it says broad versus uh, exact. So this is including Eldon, and it's spelled different ways. Eldon W, all these different sorts of things. Um, if I move these sliders over, I'll move that one over to maybe the third spot over here. And uh, snow, I'll, I'll, I'll say I want to do that one exactly. So I'll move that clear over to the right. Now I'll click Apply, and it will cut down the number of hits. Look at it, cut it down to 199 out of the 22,000. So now it's much more manageable. Even this is uh, a lot of them, though. Uh, Portland, Portland, Oregon, uh, Bartlesburg, uh, uh, Bart, Bartlesburg, Bartlesville, Oklahoma. That's not my dad. None of these are my dad uh, on here. Uh, North Hollywood. Now, there's my dad because we did live in, that's 1944. That's during the Second World War. And uh, Mary B., that's my mom, Mary B. Snow. So they're right near the top here is at least one of them. Here's the thing that says view the record. I hover over that and it opens up this thing so you can look at it and say, oh, yeah, that's it. And there's that 4285 Beck Avenue. I still remember that from North Hollywood. We lived there from 1940 to well, I graduated from North Hollywood High School in 48 and then went to UCLA for a couple of years after that. So I lived at this address myself for many years. You can click on that. Uh, let me get back up here to the, which one did I get? No, here's the North Hollywood and see more. I'll click on that where it says see more. Okay, now here's that same information that, that we just saw, but over here is the page of the city directory that had that uh, that in it. Now, what I like to do is do a screenshot of this page so that I've got the information because it's easy to read on here and it gives you the details of uh, the, what it was. It was North Hollywood, uh, uh, California city directory in 1944 and so on. And then after I do a screenshot of that and label it appropriately, well, let me show, let me show you what I would do. Uh, you can actually print it to a PDF from printing that thing. You can print it to a hard copy or to a PDF if you want to. But uh, I prefer not to, to print stuff to hard copy, just print it to a PDF. I'm, I'm going to open up this uh, program that I use all the time. I've talked about it before, uh, <clears throat> which is called Fast Stone Capture. I'll click on that link right there, which opens these crosshairs, and I'll get up enough here to mark that and over to here and right over to there and click. You heard you you may have heard that click. <clears throat> this is saving it, saving it automatically in a, a program in a folder I call screenshots. And now I'll label this thing so that I'll know exactly what it is. I've actually done this before, but Snow Eldon Stafford. It didn't say Stafford, but that I know who it was. So, And then in parentheses, Dad, Dad was born in 1891. He died in 1954. And this was a, let's see, this was a 1944 
uh, city directory. So I'll put 1944, and I don't know when that year, so I'll put dash, 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 zero, zero, dash, zero, zero. Then I'll put, this was a book, and it was a city directory, and it was North Hollywood. I'm not sure I'm spelling this correctly. H O L L. Uh, uh, I could go back and correct this later, and I don't want to take too much time now, but I, I better do it correctly now. L L Y W, North Hollywood, California. And I got it from Heritage Quest Online, H E R I T A G, Heritage Quest Online. And then this program puts the date automatically at the end of it. And I'll save that. I could save it as a PDF or as a JPEG. I usually prefer to save this stuff as PDF. So I'll click save as PDF. <clears throat> okay, now I've got a picture of that page of the index. I probably should have put something about index on here to distinguish it from the, the page itself. Now I go over here to this thing and notice that it turns into a hand if I get right on it, put the arrow on it. So I'm going to click on that. And this is the page that's coming up now in that uh, uh, city directory in North Hollywood uh, in uh, 1944. Now, the first thing I noticed, even before I did anything with looking at the making it larger to read it, is down here at the bottom, Langlands and Shade. That was the name of the record store, the music store that I worked at in, in North Hollywood while I was in high school where we sold records and we sold TVs when TVs came out and uh, wire recorders and tape recorders and vinyl records came out. That was Langlands and Shade on Lancashire Boulevard. And I worked there. Uh, so I saw that uh, as soon as I started looking at this stuff. I'm going to hold down the control key uh, while I roll the mouse wheel so I can get this larger so I can actually see where dad is on here. Uh, he's over in this column. Uh, let's see. Someplace in here is snow. Uh, there's odd grass. Uh, was it the middle column? No, it's down here. Uh, there's snow. Here it start. There's snow, and here's a bunch of snows down here. There's my dad. Let me, let me make it a little bit larger so that you can actually see it uh, larger. Eldon, and in parentheses, Mary B. That's my mom. Dad was a dentist. H is home, forty-two eighty-five Back Avenue. That's where we lived. And so then I would do a screenshot of this and I would put the make try and make sure that I could get enough of the title so that up here it'd have the date and the information on the what the book was. So I may have to shrink this down a little bit so I'd get enough of the information. But I'd do a screenshot of this uh, or uh, print the whole page if I wanted to. But you can see how easy that was to find on that particular one. Now, there's bunches more on here. In fact, I found several more of my dad that I wasn't even aware of in different places where he lived at different times. Here's another one in L.A. This is a 1924 directory. That's my dad also when he first went down to Los Angeles from uh, here in St. George, Utah, after World War I when he went to dental school at uh, USC. He stayed down there, so I grew up in L.A. But uh, that's him, and he was a, says he was a carrier here, a letter carrier. And I vaguely remember him talking about that once, but that, that didn't really register, but there it is. So you can find information on the, on the people. And start with yourself and with your own parents and your kids and, and so on. Get copies of that so that you can at least get uh, the information on, uh, on what's going on with them. That's the information on city directories. Lots more we can talk about on that, but let's go back up here to the search bu button and uh, see what else we've got on here. Uh, down here we had uh, search, uh, uh, well, over here is search cemeteries. That's find a grave, essentially. That's This isn't the, the only way to get to find a grave, but it's, it's an easy way uh, to get to uh, find a grave. And it has find a grave in different uh, locations. I want to go down, though, and before I go to that, we won't go there unless we have enough time. Scroll, keep on scrolling down here, down to where it says search records in other locations. Now, look at this. Here's if you got something you want in South America, you may find some records here, etc. But down here, it says more U.S. records. Now, this is what I was really surprised when I started looking to see what it was. It's U.S. vital records. Now, it doesn't have all the records in here, but it does have a lot of them. And uh, this is where I found my dad's a death certificate from my dad that I was not even aware it was online. 
uh, anywhere. I'm, I'm, it, it may be on Family Search. I don't know. I've never checked for it, but uh, or on Ancestry. Uh, it probably is on Ancestry because they're the ones that run this. But here it's free and available uh, on there. And so you can scroll down here and you see all this stuff. Here's the Mississippi U.S. Uh, Confederate records from that time period, uh, Mississippi, this, that, and the other, uh, and so on. If you want to to select the cities or the states that you can find the records from, uh, there, I don't find any way to do it there without using the Control F. Now, Control F is a search thing that opens up a search on. I guess most browsers, it certainly does in Chrome and, and others. And then you can type in, and I've already typed in up there, California, you can see where I had it in there. And so it says there are 11 instances of California, the word California on this page. So if I click on that little down shivering right there, there's the first one, U.S., that's California, U.S., select birth and christenings. There's a bunch of birth records on there. Um, I was born in California. Mine might be on there. I don't know. I haven't checked that. Uh, there's the next California uh, example. Here's California U.S. Uh, County birth and death records. When I clicked on this one, I, I thought, well, what is this? My dad died in California. And so I, I clicked on it to see what it says. And it says it's U.S. County birth and death records from 1849 to 1994. Dad died in 1954, so he should be in this time period if, if this includes it. Here's the source information. Here's about the county birth and death records. And over here to the right, is it says, browse this collection. Now look at these as I scroll down through this. I'm just rolling the mouse wheel uh, on this uh, panel over here to the right side. There's birth affidavits. Uh, birth records, uh, 59,000 of them, birth, uh, more affidavits, all this different kinds of stuff. I kept scrolling down through here. And as I came to death, here's death, look, death certificates from 1918 to uh, well, 1918 to 1919. It looks to me like these are the death certificates that were filed by the physicians who certified that that was the death. And so they're not in complete chronological order. They're in the order that the physician sent him in, and he may have waited till the end of the month before he sent in 10 or 20 death records. So they're not indexed. And so I started through the uh, looking for the right time period. My dad died in April of 1954. I was in the Navy in those days. It was the uh, Korean War days. Um, and so uh, I started looking through the 1954, found the Aprils, and it took me quite a while. It took me a couple of hours to go through them because you have to look at each one. But I finally found his actual death certificate. I actually had a copy of it that I'd paid for, a certified copy. But the, uh, the, the very same thing is right there. Uh, just it wasn't indexed and it was harder to find, but it was there. And so here's the death certificates. I, I went through, I scrolled down here till I found 1954. Uh, wherever that was. And there's about four or five uh, sets of 1954 stuff, different time periods, starting from the beginning of the year, 1951. There, it went to 50, there's 55. So it's several in here of 54. So I looked to see about when April would be and then started through. And uh, there's, there's several thousand certificates in each of these collections. And so I started through from the Aprils and finally found it. And it was right there uh, online for free uh, from it. So <clears throat> no, you didn't have to send off for it. You got the certificate right there, which was a big help. But of course, if you don't know the death date, then it's going to be a, a pain to go through it and uh, to even find what might be. But I suppose it's doable. Or you could hire one of your grandkids to start looking for it and, and say, look, I think it was this year. Start through these when you get time and go through these one after the other and see what's there. Anyway, that, that's an example of what's in this uh, collection of these death records. Uh, let's go back and uh, I want to show you the uh, Social Security Death Index. Uh, let's see, go back up here to the search and uh, uh, Social Security Death Index. Where is it? Uh, there it is. Here it is. Search right here. Okay, uh, click uh, click search. There it is. U.S. Social Security Death Index. This is 1935 to 2014. 
they update this on a regular basis, but not everybody gets the updates. You have to pay for them for the government. And some politicians don't want this online because they think it uh, contributes to identity theft. But really, just about the opposite is the, is the case. If you get a Social Security number, you can check that number to see if it belongs to somebody who's dead. And so the, it's a it's a way of uh, of uh, verifying that uh, that things were uh, uh, were uh, uh, that it's a scam on it. Uh, let me show you an example here. I'll type in my mom's name: M A R Mary uh, Snow. And mom died in 1987. And uh, let's see, born. I won't. I'll, I'll put death. The location was Salt Lake City. Uh, she lived in California all her, most of her uh, married life. Uh, S, S, A, have I got the thing? Oh, I'm in the wrong, I'm not in the right place. Lived in, I'll put them down here, S, Salt Lake City. And then it opens up a bunch of things and it says, do you mean Salt Lake, this, that, and the other? No, not Saltillo. <laughs> I was a missionary in Saltillo, Mexico years ago. It's near Monterrey. Uh, let me uh, get back in here and as, as Salt Lake, okay, Salt Lake City, uh, Salt Lake County, Utah. Okay, now let me click search and let's see what comes up. Okay, so now here's a bunch of, there's a Mary E. Snow, here's a Mary Snow. For there, there, Mom's the second one right there. Uh, Mary Snow, that was her birth record. Um, I rec recognize her birth date. And so if I just hover over this view the record, I can click on that. There's the date with the information and uh, where she died. She died in Salt Lake. She's actually buried in Provo, but uh, she died in Salt Lake City. And you can click on that, see more. And it does the same sort of thing as we had uh, before. Uh, but you may not be able to find it that quickly unless you know some information about it. Notice the sliders over here that um, I left this one at Mary clear over here, broad search. I probably could have moved that over. What we got? We got 1,500, 1,000 something. If I move that over, let's move that over to, to there and move the, uh, uh, the, the, the snow one over to exact and click on it and see what happens. Click apply. And uh, it cut it to 472. Uh, let me move that right on over to there and click apply again and see if it cuts it more. Uh, yeah, th well, still 363, but that's doable. You can you could actually look through that. So you may be able to find uh, your information. Mom is still the second one on that uh, that page uh, right there. So you get information about it. Now, remember that for the Social Security Death Index, they had to have had a Social Security number. My dad didn't because in those days, professional people did not have Social Security numbers. They were just starting it uh, nearly the year after he died, I think. Somebody had to, they have to be dead and somebody had to have applied for the death benefits. If one, any one of those three things didn't occur, then they're, they're not in the death index. So it's not a complete index, but it's certainly worth checking since so many people have uh, social security uh, numbers. Okay, anyway, that's a, a quick uh, summary of some of the stuff that's in there. Let me get back over here to the notes. Did I already delete and hide? No, let's go back over here and make sure I get down that I've covered everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, get the uh, notes. Uh, here we are. Here's the notes. No, oh, that's censuses. That's not the right notes. I click on the wrong one. Uh, I click on past classes. Uh, something is... Uh, oh, classic. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, this is the one. Okay, so uh, here's here we go. Now let's see. We have we talked about everything I wanted to to mention here. Heritage Quest Online. We talked about it. City directories. You've seen a couple of examples of it. Newspapers. We didn't show newspapers uh, nor find a grave, but they're easy to check and worthwhile to uh, look for those. Social Security Death Index. We did, and the death records. Uh, there are they're not complete, but they're certainly worth uh, checking. And then there's the conclusions. Okay, I think that uh, that covers the details. Let me go back to uh, our uh, slideshow. Where is our slideshow? Uh, I think it was, uh, was it this one? Yeah, here's a summary. Uh, 
we looked at Heritage Quest online, and uh, it's, it's free if you can find a way to get to it. It's uh, public library cards work in most places. We looked at city directories. We looked at the Social Security Death Index. We looked at death records, and we didn't see Find the Grave, but it's easy to use. We saw some examples in searching and saving, and there's a video of this program and others that uh, we've done if you want to go back and see it again uh, on uh, uh, on YouTube and on uh, uh, Facebook as well. Have you got any questions or comments that you want to ask or comment on before we uh, finish up? If so, just unmute your mic and ask away. Any no yes, no any in chat. I, I guess I have an unrelated one. All right. I'm curious about this fast tone capture. I always struggle with trying to take screenshots. How it, do we it, forget that. Yeah, it, it is so good that I've I've used that. Uh, there's a free version. The old free version is version 5.2, uh, and that's still available. Uh, it's shareware now for the latest versions, and you pay once. I think it was 1995. I paid that several years ago, and so and I get all the updates, and so it worked with all the new programs and all that sort of thing. And I just use that over and over again. Uh, it even does scrolling screens, which I do a lot of, because it's more than one uh, one screen, and I don't want to have to do shot, shot, shot. It scrolls the screen and does the whole thing for me. And there's a whole uh, set of notes about it. We've talked about it a couple of times in, in other things. And you'll find on my website information about it, where to get it. And the old free version is still available, uh, but it doesn't do the latest stuff. But mm -hmm. And it will do screenshots. It'll do screen video recording, all kinds of things. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions or comments? And if any of you are from here in the St. George area, after we stop recording this, I'll, I want to tell you something else. Okay, is there, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, let's just uh, finish up and let me just thank you for being part of our program today. And uh, the notes are all online as well as the uh, video of this if you want to rewatch it or watch some of the earlier ones from the different uh, uh, classes we've had. And all the notes are posted on my website. So thanks very much for watching. Glad to have you with us today.